Sure. All right. It's preparing. Okay. Yay. Okay. We're live. Hey, good afternoon, everybody um, out there in Facebook land. Uh, sorry if this is awkward, but I'm not used to doing Facebook live videos or talking into the camera. Like, hey, guys. We're we doing today. Hopefully, everybody's doing good. Um, we're back here in our backyard quarantine. Uh, Going to set a quick demo today, thanks to South Hub Graphics. Um, it's been a minute since we've been out in the studio, um, but it's great to have the opportunity to kind of do a demo and share it with y'all out there, wherever you're at in Cyberland, at home on the couch, or in your office, or on your phone, in your car, or wherever. Uh, we're going to do a quick little monoprint demo today. Um, for me, monoprints is, is something that's really fun to do. I think printing in general, the silk screen, uh, a lot of times it's repetitive and a lot of the images are flat. So it's a chance to kind of experiment and, and, and have fun with the screen and do something that's kind of original and fun. Um, I'm not the best at it. Uh, so I'm really experimenting all the time. Something that's really fun to do, and it's really great to learn from it. Um, we got really gnarly echo right now, so hopefully that goes away. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully you're willing to try it, and we'll do a couple more of these workshops again. Um, thanks to Self Help um, for allowing us to do this and giving us the, the stuff to help us set it up. Um, so I have just my two brushes. Um, and then just to give you guys, guys an idea of what a monoprint is, um, here's a really big one. We're not gonna be uh, working on uh, uh, monoprints this size today, but if you look at it, this is just like one print. A mono, monoprint basically means one print. Um, and this is something I did um, a while back before the quarantine. Um, it really allows lots of texture in the print and lots of color seepage and, and kind of color combinations on just like one screen instead of having to create like a bunch of different layer screens. Um, I like it, it's lots of fun. Um, I don't always like to create layers in different screens and wait, I just want to do a one pop and see how it is um, and kind of see what comes out of it. Um, and this is kind of what comes out of it. So today we're starting with just like a blank screen. So here's an example of a blank screen. And I use this cardboard to kind of size off our print area. Um, and then here's our screen. So if you notice on the screen, I just kind of traced it with a pencil and then I taped it off using some cheap scotch tape. Um, I put some offset like little papers here so it's not sitting flat on my paper. So I have some kind of space between the screen and the paper so it's not sitting exactly on the paper. Um, I have my sketch. So my sketch is a sunflower. We're gonna try um, creating this today, see how it works out. We're outside, so it's kind of hot. Um, so the thing about monoprinting is you are painting on a dry screen and your inks will start to dry on the screen. Um, I think that's one of the things that that gives you the texture. So it's also kind of knowing like how your inks dry and which inks to apply first on the screen. Um, I have a little plexiglass, but also Got to shoot a mylar, and I think, um, and I also had it registered. So I registered my area to my paper, and again today we're just using cheap bristle paper that I had lying around. Um, you could use any kind of sketch paper, anything that's kind of thick, like watercolor paper, drawing paper, whatever. Um, I kind of sized it. I eyeballed it. Um, and I sized it to the center of my paper, so I have a border going all around. Um, I do have my 
my three point registration here, but I just have the paper taped down. Um, it doesn't really need too much registration because you're only doing one print. Um, so as long as you line it up to your one print, you should be fine. Um, I'm gonna put my sketch down, try to center it as much as possible. And then I'm gonna put my plex right on top. And then my screen goes down right over that. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, if you wanna ask more questions, maybe we could talk it towards the end about stuff. But I'm just gonna go ahead and get started painting. Um, I have my color palette here. It's basically just a styrofoam plate with some inks on there. Today we're using just random water-based color inks. Uh, I have different like things that hold them. So these are really cool. Um, our next session, we'll use these and we'll talk about these and how we can use these to make our monoprints. But today we're just gonna pan the screen and keep it really basic. It's hot out here, sweat. Sweating for the camera already. All right, um, monoprint process. So the process is to kind of quickly or, or rapidly paint on the screen before all the ink dries on there. Today we're using a 160 mesh screen. I prefer to use 160 to 200 for the monoprints, just so that thing doesn't seep through too much. So it sits right on top and that we have better control of it. Um, the idea of painting on the screen is not to push the ink through the screen, but to create the image that sits on top of the screen so then you can go ahead and, and print it. Um, so if you think about monoprinting, it's kind of like painting backwards or painting on the back of a window where you're laying down some of the, the details first or the things that are usually on top of the painting or that you apply last. We're applying first today. So today I'm gonna to start with yellow um, for the, the details of the inside of the flower and, and some of the details on the, the petals. So I'm just gonna dip my, and I have a collection of cheap brushes that I buy from the 99 cent store. And every time I'm there, I'll buy a pack and I just use them and that's how I use them. So I'm just gonna apply, I'm just gonna do lines and squiggles and, and, and whatnot. Ah, try not to drop your, your brush, but that's fine. It gives me more texture. So the thicker you apply the ink on your screen, the longer it'll take to dry. If you leave like a little thin piece, it's gonna dry up. So when you actually pull your print, that's gonna become white. So I think that's also a good way to kind of create light and kind of shadows. Um, what I put down right now will be white when we make the print. And I'm gonna add some dark yellow for some of the leaves. Exciting, right? Oh, and shout out to my camera person, Valeria, for holding the camera for me today mm -hmm. and helping me set up the whole um, Facebook Live. So I'm just applying all the details that I want to see uh, kind of on top of the screen. I'm kind of doing it really fast. I'm not really the best painter. Um, I think this is a process that I learned from watching lots of the artists at Self Help. Um, some of the greats like Yolanda Gonzalez, shout out to La Maestra Yolanda. She's really great at this, at creating portraits. Um, also artists like Wayne Healy and Miguel Angel Reyes are really great. So just having a look at their prints and seeing what they've made has really kind of helped me figure this out. And then also, um, being able to take a class, um, a quick workshop, monoprinting with the Maestro Joel Puche. I think I learned a lot from, from just like watching him and, and, and seeing what he did and kind of learning my own techniques and then going off and trying to figure it off by myself. So there's some of the yellow. 
I'm gonna do some of the dark green next. Paint's getting kind of dry being out here in the in the backyard. Hopefully everybody's doing all right in the quarantine and staying healthy. Staying creative any way they can. I'm really sloppy at this, so I know you're probably like, what the hell? Um, that's kind of how I like to roll. See how it comes out. Usually, when I do demos of model printing, they come out really dorky. Um, but it just gives me more incentive to keep trying and keep doing it. All righty. So, I have some of the details on there. Now, I'm going to work with some of the flower part. I was trying to get like a good brown since I didn't bring brown with me. I think that. Kind of all right. I kind of want it to look like a sunflower eyeball. And one day I'll invest in some like good Some good brushes so I could step up my game. And then if you notice, I let some of those yellow parts dry. And now I'm just going over them. Um, so it's also kind of being patient with your inks and kind of knowing when they're going to dry and knowing that when you can go over them a little bit. Because I think if I were to go over them right away, they would have just um, blended in to the other ink. And I'm gonna leave a space just cause when I pull the print, um, I wanna pull it so that color goes in there. So I'm gonna leave a little space. And then again, that yellow part that I put on there, I said it's gonna turn white. Hopefully that works out. And there we have the center for our flower. And then we're gonna work on some of the petals. So I have a fatter, fatter brush and we'll see how, how these come out. Kind of mix it in. Um, I like to get lots of different color in my brush just to give me, and just to give the petals some depth and some different colors going on in there. I'll use a thinner one. Also, it's looking kind of sunflower-y-ish. Neighbors are out, so if you hear people talking or dogs barking, it's just El Sereno. <laughs> Coming at you live from El Sereno. And definitely use your sketch as like a guideline. I'm kind of not really going by what the sketch is. I'm just kind of filling it in. Thank you. 
like I said, for me, this is like super fun. Uh, I get all into it. I always want to make these. It's one of those things I want to make one. You want to keep on making them because I think the ones that you make never come out like how you want them. So it becomes this kind of like challenge to make one that, that you think is going to be the best one for you. Um, and usually when I make them, I can't really look at them right off the bat. I'm kind of like, oh, it didn't come out good or, uh, but they come out really good. I think I go back to them and I'm like, oh, that was really good. That looks like a painting. Um, and since I never do painting, it makes me think that I'm, I'm, I'm like an artist and stuff. other than just like a screen printer guy. And get a little sweat on the screen, that's okay. And it's pretty much our sunflower. I think I'm gonna add a little bit to it. I want it to be a little bigger and kind of go off. And um, I think once you have this, you have it set up. Now I'm going to apply the background. I'm going to put some ink on here. I want it to be kind of like a sky blue background. I'm just going to put it right on my paper. And then I'm going to just use this to fill in mostly all the areas that are underneath where I painted. Because when we pull the screen, we're going to pull all the ink down. Um, so I want to make sure that I'm not just pulling down like a, a bleed of colors. So I'm going to try to fill this in as best as I can. Although I do like to leave like some areas of space to catch the color that we're going to be pulling down the print. I'm going to be using a darker blue. Usually I'd like to use a hot pink, but we'll do something different today and I will get like a couple of those different tones of blue. Typically we do this inside the studio where it's air conditioned and nice and I'll have some music on, but Stuff like this can be done outside as well, too. Um, you could also try this. If you don't have a screen or a frame, you could also try to get away with using maybe some screen mesh. If you have some, you could order some online and just use like an embroidery hoop. So hopefully it looks like a thing. It's starting to look like a thing already. Um, and then before I, I apply the ink that I'm gonna pull the screen with, I need to remember to take out my plexi and my sketch. Um, I've actually left it in there a few times. There's the back of the screen and how it looks. That down. Okay, we'll do it. Actually, I will do a hot pink. I'm 
and I'm just gonna add a bead of color. And this is the color that I'm gonna pull down through the print. So I'm hoping that this will come in and kind of go in all the areas that I miss and kind of fill it in to give me a little bit of texture and some background color. Um, we'll see how it comes out. It's been a while since I've done this, maybe a good month or so. So it's a good practice to kind of get back on it again and actually like talk about it as I do it. I don't think I've ever done that before. Um, so here we go, wish me luck. Got ink on my hands, which is a good thing, I love it. So I'm gonna kind of hold this thing. I have it set up on my little like wooden like press with the hinges. But you could probably get away with just holding it down on the paper or, or having somebody help you, like, you don't really need this whole gizmo. And here we go. And you can look at the bottom and it creates a mess. Um, hopefully it didn't dry too much, but it dried on the screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift the screen up and see what we got. And of course it's stuck to the screen. So if we were in a, bit, a little bit more controlled environment, you would get less of the white. The white is basically how the ink dried on the screen. But I really like how that comes out. It, it looks really cool. Um, and that's pretty much a monoprint, creating one print. Um, you're left with a lot of messy screen that you have to clean up, but that's OK. It's lots of fun. I think it's worth it. Um, and that's kind of how my gnarly sunflower came up. So hopefully. You all dug it, and it was a cool, quick little demo. And definitely let me know if you have any questions. Yay, I did a thing. Hey, so we did a thing. So let me know if you have any questions. Uh, again, thank you to Self of Graphics and Art. Thank you to Valeria for being the camera person. I appreciate y'all um, hanging in there. Uh, staying safe and, and healthy. Cool. I don't know how this works. I don't know how we sign off or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, y'all.